Hello YouTube, this is For The Presenter and welcome to another episode of the Handling Challenge. This is the best of Europe and we're going to start off with a Renault Clio V6 because I just thought I needed a mad European car. There are a lot of them. And yeah, so if I do pause on a few of these, um, lots of mid-run, um, I do apologise. Uh, first one we just went straight into the barrier, I do that quite often on the first runs. And then this run, I thought we were alright, and then I saw we clipped the uh, bollard. So I couldn't really go around it, could I? It sort of defeated that. Now, once again, we're just trying to flick the car in. And I was just using a bit of steering to the left, and then a ton of steering to the right. Gets the car flicked quite nicely, and I've sped up this bit. Um, yeah, I, I just showed that because of how wide I went. And then, um, because. At this point, I get into a certain point in a run where I just think, you know, I know this isn't going to be as good as it can be, and I clipped um, a cone anyway. And this one hit the wall, managed to damage the engine in a rear engine car. And a very similar incident. I have a load of incidents in this. This car was pretty to drive, but like I knew it had the potential to be really, really quick. Um, and like some cars, you just get fed up with like certain crashing. I start like crashes like this, they just get annoying after a little bit. Um, I thought I'd just try going back around a little bit. Um, although I knew this wouldn't count, and we managed to spin it. Um, I just put that in there to make it a bit different. And you can see another crash into that barrier. Um, when a car does that, it gets really frustrating after a little bit. And um, I, I think I did actually start to get a bit angry. And like, this was a run later. Like, you can see we're so close to the end, I don't think I've ever messed up past this point. Now we're coming into the final corner, where you know I'm going to mess up here, don't you? Into the barrier, because I was going far too much speed. Oh, that was so close to being a good run as well. Now let's be very careful. Oh, dink the wall a little bit, and yeah, I knew the run was over. And another run now coming through the bottleneck. And we've clipped to the wall a little bit there, and thought, oh, it's not too bad. Let's just see how it would have gone. And c completely mess up. Um, hitting that barrier. I think it was a little bit deliberate, a tiny bit. Um, and then you can see now, this is back on the uh, figure of eight that starts up the course and oversteer. And we spin into the barrier. Another one through the bottleneck now. Clip the wall a little bit. And if I tap it like... Yeah, I, I knew I was going into the wall there. Um, I do try and carry on, but that one I think I just gave in a bit myself. And now, it really starts to show me how annoyed I'm getting. I just want to get a clean run out of this car. And once again, we've hit the wall. And this is a run later. We just hit the wall and... Yeah, deliberately spin it out. Um, and then this run looked like it was so tidy. I'd managed not to hit the ballard, but I spun it. Anyway, it took a long time to get a good run with this car. But um, it was worthwhile doing because you knew it, could, it was going to have potential to be right towards the top. And you can see now, for the first figure of eight section, we're doing all right. Keeping the car maintained. Bit of oversteer there on the way out. Bit too tail happy. Really, I didn't think this car would be so bad with the rear engine, rear wheel drive. I thought it'd be on par with the four wheel drive machinery that's gone towards the top. Either way, now through the tyre stack, on towards the hut corner, past the bollard, um, and now this is the really quick section up to the um, bottleneck, trying to get the car nicely slowed down because um, it is quite technical. Depends what angle you take, how much speed you can carry. Keep it above 40 miles an hour, and we run, run close to this wall. As we come up to the um, spin draw corner, which we're just gonna drive through, <laughs> rather than actually trying to do a spin draw around. And this is it now, the slalom. Um, so many cars have come and done on this because it is such a slow section. Um, if it, like some cars, if they're a bit tail happy, and like the torque that you used to get turned on the tighter bits, that can be your enemy on this bit um, because it spins the car out or it um, forces you to go too quickly and miss one of the cones. But that didn't happen on this run come back towards the hut at, and towards um, the other tyre stack that you, you try and do a tight donut round or just a roundabout around I guess you could say um, with how poor I am at driving I don't try and drift with a handbrake I'm not very good at it and uh, that would just penalise cars for my driving uh, this car had barely any understeer through here I mean I had to back out at that point normally I have to back out because the car's going horrifically wide I had to back out because I was going far too close which is a first, I think. Um, there's not many cars that I've ever done that with. And now onto the second to last corner. 
after the back straight. We're very good through there. And there, uh, because I've made the mistake earlier of going too close, I'm trying to be a bit sensible and break in there. Anyway, here we are now, through the barriers and across the line. And the next car is the Audi Quattro. Um, yeah, I was saving this from a TV um, car episode, but I thought I've got this livery and getting the Gene Hunt one would be a bit difficult. So without further ado, let's fire up the Quattro. And yeah, I had to say that in the most boring voice possible, didn't I? Um, and first run, as always, the crash into the wall. It's just a bit of a ceremonious thing now. It, it's almost it's something that happens every single time. And um, this car have kept four wheel drive. I know I could have got high PI without it, but um, four wheel drive, like drive tr drive trains and stuff like that, is my choice. It's only like the um, conversions. And I, I decided I didn't really want it because four wheel drive cars do tend to be better on than wheel, rear wheel drive cars. You look at the um, top couple, like the Mitsubishi, that's four wheel drive. And um, I have t tested with rally cars before and they go quite quickly. I've tested the uh, Super 2000 just in normal spec. And that goes quickly because it is four wheel drive. Now you can see now here we are at the um, figure of eight section and we clip the barrier once more. It's just so many mistakes on this bit, it gets a little bit frustrating after a bit. But, um, yeah, you can see now, um, we're good through there, good, too tight, that wasn't even a drift. But it didn't take very long, um, I've shown you all the runs for this car, it took about five attempts, that was it. Um, he, he can see now, through the figure of eight section, um, we're very good, oh, that was close to the wall, I didn't realise how close that was, until just, um, probably because I haven't got the sounds. Tell me, it's all right. Um, now here we go. Um, trying to get it slowed down. We've gone a little bit wide there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's nice and tidy. Um, get a nice bit of power on the exit, and you can run a bit closer to that ballard, but there's no real point in doing it with a car like this. It's just gentle now, up to the bottleneck. You don't have to do anything stupid here. And we're carrying a bit too much speed in, and we just about get away with it. And now we're running very close to that wall. And you can see at this point, um, like we're, just, we're about 50 seconds through. This could be a record for this. It, it could be if um, we keep it tidy through the slalom and get a decent amount of speed. Um, but we have messed it up a little bit there. We're having to go really tight because I didn't quite get the car turn. I was expecting to knock over a cone there. But that didn't happen. Um, go a bit wide there. Um... Yeah, I think we lost a lot of time on that section. We've come through the hut, past the hut again, and we're going to just use that bit of a kick to try and get the car turned, but I think I've done it a bit too early. And I got a bit too much oversteer from it, so I had to back out of it in the end. Um, like I say, just stupid mistakes like that, and the slalom really could harm this car's time. As we come to helicopter corner, and we're keeping it nice. Um, I did have to back out a bit there, I think. Um, it certainly looks like it when I haven't got sound on for the recording. But, yeah. Um, now we're very tidy through there. Very quick. Taking a nice wide line. Had a bit of um, tail happiness at the top. But now we've come down the back straight. We're through the penultimate corner. And now we're getting ready for the final corner. Through the tyre barriers. And we've gone a bit wide there. That hasn't gone too well. And we have clipped that ballard. But that isn't classed as an obstacle at that point. So we're across the line and no penalties are on record. <laughs> well, and the final car for this is the Ferrari 330P4, I think it's called. Yeah, there it is. Um, I, I love this car. I, I, I managed to get this for an absolute steal. I think I got it for about half a million credits in an auction. I'm normally looking at 9 million for a car like this. Um, actually, I think, no, it's 9... It's, I don't know, it's... I've a 9 Whatever it is, it was um one one way around like that. It was either five percent of its value or twenty percent of its value. I, I forget now. Um, but yeah, we're pretty tidy. and um, we haven't had the usual crash at the first obstacle, which makes a real change because we do that every single time, and we almost do something a bit stupid there. Have to fight to control the car, and look how close we get to that ballard. There's just so much confidence to be had with this car, and the speed of it is incredible. Um, I mean, considering this is quite a long wheelbase car, this car has beautiful, beautiful handling. 
And we've clipped the wall a little bit there for the bottleneck, and I sort of just gave in at that point. Knew I wasn't get the, going to get the car slowed down. Um, and you can see now, we're doing alright from here, we're getting a bit of a drift on. And there we are, we're good there, and just tried to be a bit too clever with it. And now this is um, another run. Um, I don't even believe I've missed any out on this. Um, so you'll see how few runs this car actually takes. Have a bit of a tap with the wall there. And I've got it a bit wide. And this was just me now having a bit of fun. Tried to be a bit clever. No real need. But it didn't take massively long to get a good timing. This was only the fourth or fifth attempt. So I think it is the fourth. Um, it's one of the quicker cars to get round. Um, in terms of how many runs taken. And you can see how we're very composed. And now just put the throttle down to the max. Um, heavy brake in there. Um, and keep it nice and tidy. By the way, I have kept this car rear-wheel drive. Um, I tend to just keep it the same. Now, when it comes to um, drive trains. Unless it is front-wheel drive and I can put it to rear or fourth. Um, that is really the only time I'd mess about with that. Because front... But this is rear, although I could have put four-wheel drive on this. Um... Oh wow, this car's coping really well, and you can see how quick it is now. We've just got up past the 45 second point of the run, and we're going probably a bit safer through there. You can take that about 5 or 10 miles an hour quicker, um, but that was alright for the spin drive, and now we're onto the slalom bit, keeping the car nice. It's very composed, really, considering one, the size of it, and two, the power of that engine. Also, the fact that it's rear wheel drive, considering all of those things, that is relatively composed. And we try and get a bit of a kick out. It didn't quite work. I think it understeered a bit because I didn't quite get the kick right. As we're through the hut now. And we're just slowing down nice and gently. Get the drift in a little bit. And tail happy, tail happy. And just about get straightened out in time. For um, it started to cost us a bit of time on the run. And now we're being a bit careful through here. Past helicopter corner. And we're getting ready now for the back straight. And you can see, I'm able to take that line a little bit early. Not the earliest I've taken the car, and I'm not risking it getting too close to the barrier. I just want to make the most of the speed. Slowing down a little bit here, just so I don't go too wide. I can get really quick running through the final corner. Now we're coming up towards the line, and this could be an absolute record breaker on this. And it is. As you can see there, we're three tenths quicker almost than the Mitsubishi Evo 8 with the Ferrari. The Renault Clio V6 is in third. And the Audi Quattro is in fourth. All of them beating the Lotus Elise, which I thought would be a difficult car to beat. By the way, I'm only showing the top nine for this. If you want to um, have a look at the full leaderboard, um, there'll be a link in the description down to the file. And <laughs> I've just... I have to be careful with that, I know, because I do put the times on there a bit before the videos come out. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. This has been Forza Potenza, and I shall see you next time. Bye!